D on the last page. Let's D on the last page. Okay, so for for D, what we have is we've got a chiral alcohol, and the question is how can we replace the OH with inversion or retention or 50-50. So you're, so you're supposed to give the reagents that will do, um, that will do the reaction. So in terms of the, in terms of retaining the configuration, what reagent would I use to put the CL in exactly the same position as the OH? HCL will give some retention of configuration, but it'll also give... No, the 50-50 will be HCL, you're correct. So let's just start with retention. What reagent would I use for retention? Anna? The SOCL2 will, I think that will give retention. I think that's the one that gives retention. And then the PCL3, I believe, also gives retention. So either SOCL2 or PCL3 would give you the retention of configuration. And again, this is by a mechanism that we're not really talking about. If you wanted to see the mechanism, um, there's you could. If it's not in the textbook, you can look at you could look at it online. So then, if I want to do inversion of configuration, I need to do two steps, right? Because to do inversion of configuration, the first thing I need to do is I need to convert the OH to a tosylate ester. And then when I convert it to the tosylate ester, because the tosylate ester doesn't change the stereochemistry of the chiral carbon, then if I added something like Cl- to it, the Cl- would come in and kick off the tosylate ester, that would be an SN2 reaction, which that second reaction would go by inversion so that we would end up overall then with the Cl, and I'll just put the Cl on the dashed line, and then the H and the CH3 on the regular lines. So that would that's how we would do inversion, is by basically converting the OH into a tosylate ester and then doing the reaction. So far so good, everybody? I have a question. So why is that just the tosylate ester? Because I guess when it's on parts, you're able to just stop and you're able to use the HCL well, is that a primary? Was that a primary system? Yeah. So if it's a primary system, then the water won't leave, so you won't get a carbocation. But if it's a primary system, it can't be chiral, right? Because if it's primary, it's got a CH two, and so it's automatically not chiral. So what we're doing is we're doing a secondary. We're doing a secondary. So then if we treated this with HCl, now the first step is going to be to protonate the OH group and make a carbocation. And so now if we have, well, if we have the oxonium ion produced, and then because this is secondary, we would lose the water. Then we're going to form a secondary carbocation, 
which the way I've written it here, all three of those groups would be in the plane of the screen. So that means then that the CL minus would add from above 50% of the time and below the plane 50% of the time so that we would end up with then the racemic mixture of having the C with the CL with the H with the CH3 and with the cyclohexyl ring. So it would be 50% R and 50% S. And so whenever you add H plus to an alcohol, if that water can leave and form a secondary or tertiary carbocation, it will. And so then this, this would be classified as an SN1 mechanism because it involves a carbocation intermediate. And we know from last semester that when you do SN1 with a chiral molecule, you always end up with a racemic mixture. So again, the whole idea here is if I want retention, I can get retention. If I want inversion, I can get inversion. And if I wanted to get rid of the chiral center for some reason, and I don't know why I'd want to do that, I could use HCl. Usually it's a lot of work to get a chiral center, so I don't necessarily just want to destroy it. But if I did, I could. What else? G. What's G? Okay, we're going to add acid and water to this in our first step. Then we're going to add SOCl2, and then we're going to add tertiary toxide. So let's do the first step. What am I adding to the double bond? H and OH, how? Markovnikov. So I'm going to get an OH here and an H there. Okay, now I'm going to react that with SOCl2. What's going to happen there? I'm going to substitute a CL for an OH. What else does SOCL2 do? Nothing. That's its job. So right now, SOCL2 only does one thing. It changes an OH to a CL. There's only one thing the PCL3 does. Change an OH to a CL. Okay. So just as you're you know, organizing your reagents, or hopefully you had a chance to do that over the weekend, there are some reagents that just do one thing. Now, there are some reagents like Camino 4 and hydrogen peroxide that do many different things. So you have to kind of keep them in context. But these reagents that just do one thing, you just have to remember, they only do one thing. So they convert an OH to a CL. Okay, last step is to use potassium tertiary So what kind of reaction am I going to get? E2. We agree? Okay. So if I'm going to get an E2, what do I have to do? Remember from last semester, what do I have to do? I've got to, got to figure out which hydrogen is going to be removed, which means I need the alpha, 
and the two beta carbons, make sure the beta carbons have hydrogens, and so now I, now I figure out if the tertiary oxide can remove, which hydrogen is going to remove. So which beta hydrogen is it going to remove? One on the left, one on the right. The one on the right, so that's going to basically then, it's going to come in, grab that hydrogen, pair of electrons moves there, chlorine gets kicked off, and I'm back to the starting material. Will you have some of those problems where you may have to do more than one step on Friday? Yes. Will you have a whole string of them where you have where you just have reagents over the over the arrows? So you've got to go from this product to this product to this product to this product. No, because if you don't get the first product right, you're not going to get the last product right. And I usually don't let you make up your own problems which is what you would be doing if you got the first one wrong and then I graded it from there. On the other hand, if you saw reactant to product and you had to give me a reagent, that's fair game because that's basically a single problem for each one of those. So that's why you need to know your reagents. What else? So D on the second page is, is, is the same as what we went over on this one for some reason, except there I gave you the reagents and asked you to write the products and on the last page I gave you the products and asked you to write the reagents. So again it would be SOCl2, PCl3 for retention, tosylate first and then chloride for inversion and then HCl for a 50, would give a 50-50 mixture. Okay, so this was what we kind of started with. The whole purpose of the last lecture was if I want to, let's see, it's an OH with, oh, it's the OH there, okay, and then two there, okay. So I want to be able to form both sets of alkenes. From, I want to be able to form both sets of alkenes from that OH. So looking at that, can I? If I reacted this, if I reacted this alcohol with if I reacted it with H2SO4 and heat, what product would I get? Let's see. No, no, we're okay. So if I reacted with H2SO4 and heat, would I get A, B, or A and B as the major product?
Emma never made it to this class. Should have taken her off the rolls. Abby. Abby. And you can ask for help too. You're gonna ask for help? Ask for help, okay? A. A? Do we agree? Why A? Okay, so it'll protonate the OH and then the water will leave, putting the carbocation at this position. The more substituted double bond. So because I'm using H2SO4 and heat, that will, unless it's a primary alcohol, and if it was a primary alcohol like this, there would only be one set of beta hydrogen, so it wouldn't be there wouldn't be a question about which product you're going to produce. H2SO4 and heat always goes by an E1 mechanism when there's more than one hydrogen to choose from. And so that means it's always going to form the SATSEF product, which is the more stable one. And the more stable one is A. So unless you're doing H2SO4 on a primary alcohol, it will always form the more stable double bond. Because that's actually the reaction that Sates have studied to come up with this rule. Okay, so that's one set of reagents I could use. So maybe up here I would say I'm going to use H2SO4 and heat. Now what if I want to form the other one? What should I do? I could use a tosyl chloride, so I could react this with the tosyl chloride. And I could convert that alcohol then to the tosylate ester. And then what would I use to get to the final product? Aisha? I can use tertiary Because the reasoning there is, here's my alpha carbon, here's my beta carbon, here's my beta carbon, there's my beta hydrogen, there's my beta hydrogen. I want to form the double bond that's less substituted, which means I want to remove the beta hydrogen that is least sterically hindered or most accessible, so I have to use the tertiary toxide. Nick? Yes. So there is an, there's another way to do this. If I wanted to, I could say, you know what, I want to convert this molecule into let's just say a halogen. So I can convert the OH into a halogen. How would I do that? I could use SOCl2, PCl3, PBr3, SOBr2, there's all those different reagents. And I could also just simply use, because this is a tertiary alcohol, I could use HBr or HCl. So I have that whole series of rea reagents to get me to the halogen, and then I would still react that halogen with a tertiary toxide to deprotonate and form the less, sterically, or the less stable product.
Okay. Yes. So again, for to form product A, we could use we could make it a tosyl chloride and react it with NH two minus. Or we could convert the OH to a Cl or a Br using all the reagents I said earlier and NH2 minus. So you could also form that product by using NH2 minus. <coughs> so there's multiple ways to do this. And you could use any of those any of those methods to make either A or B. If it's a primary alcohol, HBr and HCl would not be my be my choice, right? I mean, it'll get done because we could go back to last semester, right? I mean, I could have reacted my butanol instead of with sulfuric and NABr. I could have just added HBr to it. It still would have taken a long time of reflux. So in those choices, that's where we would use the PCL3, the PBR3, or SOCL2. As those are the reagents we would use with the primary. But with the secondary, you can always use HBR and HCl. Now, realistically, if the molecule can rearrange, it might. So with PBR3 and all of those, the, P, the PBR3, PCL3, um, SOCL2, S SOBR2. Those reagents do not undergo rearrangement. So they would be ones that if you wanted to make sure it didn't rearrange, you would use those. And that's what I think we were talking about on Friday, because somebody didn't like HCL and HBR. So if you want to avoid those problems of potential rearrangements and of long reaction times, you can use the other reagents. Anything else? Oh yeah, there's multiple. There's there's how many different if I gave you a problem like this where you had to take and form the most substituted and the least substituted double bond from an alcohol, and I, I don't know, if I was betting, I probably would bet on that happening, um, since we've gone over it multiple times. You have multiple ways to do it. The, the most direct method for the most substitute is just H2SO4 and heat, or H3PO4 and heat, either one of those. But any of those combinations will work. Anything else? Can you go over B with a primary alcohol? B with a primary alcohol. So with a primary alcohol, the, so if we have a primary alcohol, um, let's see, is there one more carbon in here or just that one? Just like that. With OH, okay. So if I want to form, I have to form this one, right? Okay, so if I want to do that, there's this is my alpha carbon and this is my beta carbon. So there's only one beta hydrogen in that system. So I could very easily say, let's just use H2SO4 and heat. So that what would happen is I would, I would protonate the OH and I would form the oxonium ion, and then what would happen is I can't have the water leave because that would form a primary carbocation, so the H is going to, it's not going to shift, the H is going to go here, the water is going to leave, so I'm going to end up losing H2O, and I'm going to lose my acid catalyst and then form the double bond. 
So when you have a primary system, you only have one set of beta hydrogens to, to deprotonate. That's it. So you can only get one product. Unless I say do this with rearrangement. And if it's with rearrangement, the hydrogen doesn't leave. It shifts over and puts the tertiary carbocation in place. And then we have a new beta hydrogen. We've got a carbocation, so now it's the most stable product. But in this case, I didn't say rearrangement. I didn't say not rearrangement either. So I guess you could have done it either way. <coughs> Bless you. Okay. <coughs> Anything else? Okay, so that one with with the rearrangement without rearrangement. So that's that goes along with what we just with what we just talked about. The idea that if I took this reaction and said I'm going to react that with H2SO4 and heat and I'm going to do this with rearrangement or I'm going to do it without rearrangement then first thing I'm going to do again is H plus I'm going to protonate the OH to form the oxonium ion. And since this is a primary system, the water just can't leave. So I'm going to reverse this, and, I'm, and the one, my horizontal one's going to be no rearrangement, and my vertical one's going to be the one with rearrangement, since I already wrote it that way. Well, actually, you know what? I could write it, I could write it down here again. Okay, so I'm going to protonate either way. Then the question is, what do I do? I still only have one alpha carbon and still only one beta carbon. So the question is, what do I do with the beta hydrogen? If I want to rearrange, I'm going to shift. I'm going to do a one-two shift of the hydrogen and kick off the water. So in doing that one two shift I'm going to end up with the hydrogen on the primary carbon. I'm going to end up losing H2O. And I'm going to end up with the hydrogen now on the primary carbon and a secondary carbocation. So this is so that's going to happen with the rearrangement. So the hydrogen is going to shift over and kick off the water at the same time. Now I have a new alpha carbon and new beta carbons. And so now because this is a carbocation rearrangement or a carbocation reaction, it is now what mechanism? E1. And so E1 reactions always give me the most substituted double bond. And so in this case, I'm going to actually lose the beta hydrogen on the left. So I'm going to lose my H plus, and I'm going to form the double bond to the ring. If I don't do a rearrangement, then I'm going to do exactly what I just did in the last problem. I've got my alpha carbon, I've got my beta carbon with my beta hydrogen. I'm going to lose my beta hydrogen and I'm going to lose water. So I'm going to lose H plus, the 
catalyst, lose H2O, and I'm going to end up forming the double bond now to the least substituted carbon. Because without a rearrangement, there is only one beta carbon with, with beta hydrogens. And if there's only one beta hydrogen set, that's where the double bond has to go. Jacob? Would the arrow down from the hydrogen be a pair of Just the electrons? Um, it's a pair of electrons. So anything that's a pair of electrons is always a full-blown arrow. Anything, the fish hooks, this is one electron, this is two electrons. We've only done the fish hooks when we did brom when we did HBr addition with hydrogen with peroxide and did anti Markovnikov addition. We'll use those a lot more, but except for that reaction, everything we do is a full blown arrow. That's why the hydrogen is being lost as an H plus. It it's got no electrons. How do you rearrange for the more stable carbocation for B? We'd have to take a look and see where where I should rearrange it. So let's see, I've got which one does it again? So I've got the OH here. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and let's protonate this. Have the water leave. If I was to rearrange, I'm going to have to hydride shift. So where am I going to hydride shift? To the left or to the right? Or left hydrogen shift or right hydrogen shift? Because again, alpha, beta, beta, it's got to be a beta hydrogen that shifts. So if I beta sh if I hydride shift the right beta hydrogen, this one in a square, what kind of carbocation am I going to get? I'm going to get a primary carbocation. So this would result in the primary carbocation. If I hydride shift the beta hydrogen to the left, what kind of carbocation am I going to get? Those are your two choices. This one's primary, this one is secondary. So which hydrogen is going to shift? Hoping my name came up on this one. Katie. Katie. Which hydride? Which which hydrogen is going to shift? And it's. The one on the left that gives what kind of carbocation? Okay. Do we agree with that, Abby? That's a good point. So if I had to shift, I would shift to the one on the left, right? But you're right. Does the shift occur at all? No, because we'd 
because we'd be going secondary, secondary. So in this case, there would be no shift. So what did I say? Shift it? Yeah. That's my, that's my bad, as you would say. Right? Because we can't shift in that case. So the correct answer would be, you can't rearrange. The second correct answer would be, shift it to the left, despite the fact that it's not going to happen. I must have thought there was another methyl group in there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. When I when I go through it, I'll give you credit for either one. Well, I don't know. Is it really more stable when you do the shift? Granted, the plus charge is getting close to the tertiary position where it would be more stable. But I don't think there'd be any difference between those two secondary carbocations. Oh, yeah, so if you did a shift, so if we keep the carbocation here, we would end up with this, with that as our major product. And if we did, if we actually did a shift, we would end up with the double bond to the ring is our major product. So then here's the difficulty there. The difficulty is that I can only shift to form a more stable carbocation because I've got to get the energy from somewhere. And so if uh, I'll, we'll, human we'll talk about human traits and we'll talk about energy like as if it was like money. So if you're this carbocation right here, yeah, you could shift to this one in anticipation of getting the more stable product. But in order to make that shift, you'd have to pay for that with energy that you're, you don't get right away. Right, you'd have to say, "Well, I'll do this shift, and then I'll like take out a loan because I know I'm going to be able to form the more stable product. So I'll get all this energy back, and then I'll pay you. Then I'll pay somebody off, and you'd be paying off like the universal energy, and they they don't take loans. So there's no energy that you'd get out of it. So whether or not you'd really form this final product or not." isn't isn't an issue now if you had tons of energy where you could do either one maybe but we don't have tons of energy so like if you want to do those series of steps in a mass spec in the high energy gas phase environment maybe but if you can't get the energy back you're not going to shift Jake well how much heat is being hit this H2SO4 heat. Nah. So you, you could. You could at least get some of that product. I mean, what that would do is that would prove that you can sometimes shift without getting a more stable carbocation. I don't know the answer to that. That's an interesting question. If I bought that, if I bought this alcohol and I did use sulfuric acid and I like refluxed it, would I see any of this product on the other side? Because the only way I would see that is if I actually had a secondary, secondary shift. That would violate our rules, but it wouldn't necessarily violate all the rules. So I would, ex anything like that, I'd accept both answers. That might have been what I was thinking was you would get a more stable double bond, but then I shouldn't have been thinking that way. So our rules are you can't shift.
as confusing as that is. Well, today's topics were just epoxides, which we're going to be like review of last week and last semester. There's only one new thing, and it really isn't new, and that is how do you make ethers? So you can go through and look at how you make ethers. Um, bless you. If I wanted to make an ether, I could react this double bond with all sorts of reagents. I could say, how about H plus and alcohol? I would add the H plus to the double bond. And then I would have the ROH and lose the H plus, so I would make an ether. I could do this reaction with mercury 2 plus, and then the acetate 2 minus, and I could react it with alcohol instead of water, and then use sodium borohydride to make an ether. So those are reagents that we've done in the past to make the ether. The new method is just simply to take the alcohol and deprotonate it to form the alkoxide and then react the alkoxide with an alkyl halide so that it does an SN2 mechanism to basically add the alkyl group to the oxygen. And so we've encountered this before. All the different possibilities when we're doing this. This alkoxide, again, has a split personality. It is a strong nucleophile, but it is also a strong base. Just like the alkynyl anion from before. So if I want to do this reaction to form an ether, what kind of halide should I be reacting my alkoxide with if I'd like to do an SN2 mechanism? This alkyl halide has to be what or what? Or what? No, I need an alkyl group here. So your choices are primary, secondary, tertiary. For this to do an SN2 reaction, for this, al for this alkoxide to come in and do SN2, I need to have that alkyl halide be what? I heard it. Primary. Primary or secondary or or a methyl group. How about tertiary? So if I took my alkoxide and I reacted it with, tried to react it with this alkyl halide, would I get a substitution reaction? Yes or no? No. What would I get? E2. E2. So I'm going to get an E2 reaction. Is it going to remove the hydrogen that's most sterically hindered or least sterically hindered? That's going to depend upon what? the size of the alkoxide. So if it's a meth or eth oxide, it's probably going to act like NH2 minus, so the double bond will form in the most substitute position. And so that was, well, there's, there's 
There's more ways to do this, but this is the most common way to make an ether. And it is called the Williamson ether synthesis. And the only thing missing here is how do you make an alkoxide from an alcohol? And we'll deal with that on we'll we'll deal with that in the first five minutes of Wednesday. So you can think about that. You can also think about it in the context of how did we make this? Because that's one of the me methods we could use. Okay. All right, so Wednesday will be questions. So if you have questions, um, bring them to class. Uh, and if you have any other questions, email me or come see me or bring them to class on Wednesday.